This is Mary. Welcome to the IHC Craft Room. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these spring inspired 10 ounce candles. In my last video, I showed you how I personalized the outside by etching the glass. Today, I'm going to show you how I made the candles within. I used the Village Crafting Candle Spring and Summer Fragrance Explore Kit. I went through all 10 of those beautiful fragrances and picked out two of my favorites. And then I made these candles. Why don't you join me? Grab your stuff and let's get crafty. For materials, we'll begin with Freedom Soy Wax, two 10 ounce traditional jars, which I etched in a previous video, two tapered cork lids, some wick stickums, yellow dye chips, the Spring and Summer Fragrance Explore Kit from Village Crafting Candle, two HTP 1312 wicks, and some jute cord. For tools, we'll begin with parchment paper, some paper towel, a saucepan as a double boiler, a small pour pot, a glass measuring cup, a kitchen scale, a five ounce glass measuring cup, a plastic shot glass, wick centering tools, a pair of scissors, a pot holder, a marker, a wood stir stick, some rubber gloves, and a temperature gun, which I did not record. This is the first time I've ever made two candles at the same time that have different fragrances. So let's take a few minutes to go through some really quick candle maker math to make sure I don't mess it up. I'm using two 10 ounce traditional jars, which I'd like to fill to nine ounces. And I like my candles to have a 10% fragrance load. To make sure I have the right amount of wax and fragrance in each jar, I'm going to need 229 grams of wax per jar and 26 mils of fragrance oil per candle. That means I'll need to measure out a total of 458 grams of wax. Make sure your scale is at zero so that you're only measuring wax and not your pour pot. I'm planning on releasing a video soon with my review of the Village Crafting Candle Spring and Summer Fragrance Explore Kit for 2024. But for the time being, I've chosen my top two favorite fragrances from that set of 10, which let me tell you was not easy to do. The first fragrance I selected is Neon Blossoms. I'm going to make sure to measure out 26 mils and set that aside for later. The second fragrance I've selected is called Ethereal Glow, and I will also be measuring out 26 mils of that and set it aside so that we can move on to getting our wicks ready. If you've watched any of my other videos, one of the recurring themes that keeps coming up is my inability to be accurate under pressure without causing a disaster and having a total spaz. Since I know I struggle in that department, I like to use guide dots on the bottom of my see-through candle vessels. I'm just going to flip the jar over, eyeball the center, and place a small dot there with my red marker. I'm going to be using wick stickums to secure these wicks to the base of my vessels. You could also use hot glue or double-sided tape, but I'm a huge fan of wick stickums. They're super easy to work with and super sticky, so much so that I wish I'd taken my gloves off before doing this part. Don't forget to really push those wicks down and ensure that they're super stuck to the bottom. And I promise I will not start my song about floating wicks and how much I fear them. I mean, I might, but I, okay, I won't, I swear. Today I'm working with color dye chips. I'm going to start by crushing this dye chip so that it disintegrates a little bit more easily in the hot wax when the time comes to mix it in. Let's see if I manage to get the color I'm shooting for, which is a very pale yellow. So I'm going to use only half of this dye chip right now and save the rest for another project. I'm really hopeful that I'm going to get the right color. I have yet to nail a color I've been going for in a candle to date. So cross your fingers for me, pale yellow. Since I've never made two candles at the same time using two different fragrances, I wasn't really sure how to go about this using a double boiler. If I had a big wax melter, it would be easy, but this took a little bit more thought. Remember I said 229 grams of wax per candle. So as soon as this wax is fully melted, I'm going to use my scale and the glass measuring cup to pour 229 grams of melted wax, splitting my wax in half. But first, I'm going to add my color dye chips because I want to make sure that they get mixed in when the wax is at its hottest so that they dissolve as much as possible. Let me tell you, my small pour pot and this glass measuring cup are completely different sizes. So the optical illusion was serious and I was panicking. I was convinced that I was not splitting this wax properly. Even though the scale told me I was, my eyeballs were calling the scale a dirty liar. It's time to add the fragrance in now. And I'm wondering, do you remember which fragrance I poured into each container? Which one is in the glass measuring cup and which one is in the red shot glass? 
You're obviously listening to a voiceover right now, but let me tell you something. When I was playing back the footage of me making this candle, um, I was freaking out. I was going, oh no, I don't remember which fragrance is which. Which one is this one? Is this ethereal glow or is this neon blossoms? I have no idea. <laughs> It really wouldn't have been a big deal, except that one of these vessels, I etched it with flowers on the design. So I really wanted to put neon blossoms into the vessel with the flowers. Cause hello, how cute is that? Let's move on. After giving these a good stir, it's time to pour our wax into the vessels. You may have noticed that my temperature gun is having quite the vacation during this candle making experience. I was just so focused on the two different fragrances that I guess I decided I'd be a rebel and just not use my temperature gun. I'm just gonna pour this wax willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. Are you wondering which wax I poured into each vessel? It was an absolute shot in the dark. Did I pour neon blossoms into the flower etch jar or not? The truth is, it wasn't until I was editing this video that I knew for sure. And you know what? I got it right! No one is more surprised than I am. Seriously. Okay, let's focus. It's time to use our wick centering tools to make sure that the wicks are as straight as possible. And I'm gonna give them a good tug and tuck them into the little notches on this wick centering tool to make sure that they stay as vertical as possible as the candles set. Oh, hey, look guys, a temperature gun. Let's see what this does. Have a look at how straight those wicks are and how perfectly beautifully yellow the wax is. I am super excited to see how these candles cure overnight. It's been 24 hours and I am beyond bummed out at this color. Pale yellow? No way. More like pale peach. Another color fail, Mary. You'd think I'd be embarrassed, but I'm really, really not. Turns out soy wax and yellow dye chips equals peach, not yellow. What a bummer. Anywho, look how beautiful the tops of these candles came out. No sinkholes, no wet spots. Freedom soy wax, I think I have a little crush on you. Before we do a test burn on these little guys, I'm going to dress them up because I think it'll be fun. I'm just going to trim these wicks to about a quarter inch above the wax line and then I'm going to use this jute cord to add a little bit of additional interest. On one of them, I'll tie a bow and struggle to make it the absolute perfect size to make my little heart happy. And on the second candle, I did something a little bit different. I just tied two separate strings around the vessel and put a little knot on each side to kind of like bookend the etchings on these beautiful vessels because I really want the etchings to shine here. So what do you think? Cute, right? Well, now it's time to see how these babies burn. Let's light them up. All right, here we go. Let's see how these HTP 1312 wicks do. 25 minutes in, my melt pool is doing quite well. And at one and a half hours in, the melt pool is almost, but not quite at the vessel walls. But don't worry, because at the two and a half hour mark, I have a perfect melt pool. So I consider this spring candle making experiment a major success. Thank you for joining me on this not quite pale yellow, etched glass, jute cord embellished, first time experiment with two fragrances, candle making adventure. Can you tell I'm a fan of run on sentences? Don't forget to use code IHC5 at Village Craft and Candle to get 5% off when you pick up this fantastic spring and summer fragrance explore kit. I hope you enjoyed the ride with me. If you did, please comment below and don't forget to subscribe so that we can continue to get crafty together. Toodaloo!